Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Zupo, and I will be your instructor for Tech 4210 Technological Forecasting, one of my favorite courses to teach. A little bit about me. My undergraduate degree is from Ohio University in Conflict Analysis and Resolution. I took my intensive mediators training at Capital Law School. My master's degree is from the George Washington University in Educational Leadership and Administration with a concentration in Human Development. My PhD is in Technology Management from Indiana State University with a specialization in Human Resource Development and Industrial Training. My work background, my career background, has been in corporate legal, labor relations, and human resource management uh, with an emphasis on training. And I currently not only teach at Bowling Green, but I also consult working for myself doing a number of related items to HR labor relations and high-level custom training. Um, <clears throat> currently I am building a uh, an LMS and uh, a large component of that happens to be a knowledge management system. Uh, so it's, it's pretty exciting to be able to kind of pull all of these things together. Uh, the other thing that I'm working on for the university happens to be producing a model uh, based upon research, a competency model for our courses. The Ohio Board of Regents has set a target two years out for um, developing and launching competency programs, which I think is interesting having one foot in the practitioner world and one foot in the academic world. Um, the distinction be between theory and applied to me is everything. Uh, example, I couldn't hire someone for a job who didn't have certain knowledge, skills, abilities, i.e. competencies. And uh, I, I firmly believe this is the way we should all be teaching. However, that's not the way it goes. I, I, I think theory is wonderful to help us understand why, but we need to actually do stuff, not just talk about doing stuff. So uh, I think you'll find a common thread through all of my courses. That is my MO, is to equip you with the abilities and work products to go forward and say, not only did I learn how to do these things, I did these things. And here is an example for you to look at. Um, employers don't hire based on your uh, potential, um, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, so coming in with these things already under your belt, uh, I think is pretty important. It's not often that you would find an employer who's willing to invest a lot of money just because you're intelligent and wonderful and promising, uh, but rather they do want you to come to the table with some things that you can just hit the ground running. So I don't think that that's likely to change. Um, in terms of certifications, I think certifications go hand in hand very well with applied learning, especially in the higher ed uh, arena. And um, since you're all non-traditional students like I was, you all have work uh, experience and things that you do and know that um, make you qualified and competent and accomplished in those areas. So my goal is to kind of ferret out those things and figure out what it is that you like, that you know, that you want to know, that you need. So my teaching style, I guess I would consider to be a bit adaptive. In general, uh, the schedule for our course is immune to holidays and university closings, and that's typical of online education. I remember starting my master's degree on Labor Day um, in 2005 and we had a bunch of family here because they lived in St. Bernard Parish in Louisiana and of course had lost their home. So it was a little crazy that weekend but the fact is is that you know we just keep rolling with without regard to that. So when the university closes this stuff is always available in online courses 24-7. Um, and due to the nature of the course, that is an accelerated course where we're doing 16 weeks of work in eight, um, we don't have any time to waste. You should plan to spend six to eight hours a week on this course. And I don't know if anybody's ever explained that to you, but that is the uh, norm across all of the online education community and it is the norm for accreditation purposes too. Now will you spend a full eight hours on my course every single week? I doubt it. 
Uh, there may be times, you know, when you're working on your project, you might spend more time, but just understand that that is kind of the bar. So regardless of what you've experienced before, um, the specifics of my course do follow all of those things um, for accreditation and compliance purposes. Um, the textbook that you have is designed to give you the broad overview of the topic and, and feed some of the dynamics into the considerations of what we look at when we forecast. Um, the readings that I select and, and put out there for you in PDF form or links or whatever the case is um, supplement the textbook. So you're going to get the macro view and the micro view um, based upon those materials. So sometimes uh, next week being a very good example, I will put a, a study out there that uh, this paper was a seminal work, which is one of those foundational works in our discipline um, that has stood the test of time. You know, we talk about quality of sources a lot. Uh, it's one of those works. Now when you read academic literature, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this before, but here's a tip. Don't try to read every single word. Get the general gist of it. If there are tables and other types of figures, uh, look at them and try to get the high-level overview. But trust me, you don't want to sit there and try to digest and ingest and memorize every single word. Um, I think the same thing goes for the text. There will be some exceptions, of course, where you really do have to uh, kind of study and understand and dig a little bit deeper in the synthesis of what it is that we're trying to pull together on the macro and the micro level. Um, but I think for the most part, what I'm asking you to do is understand the big points. Um, each week you're going to have uh, a mastery check. And the mastery check is not about the ooh gotcha. I don't grade that way. I don't teach that way. But rather it, it is about understanding the terms and making sure that you can speak that language and use those things, actively use those things here and beyond. So um, you can take those mastery checks as many times as you want. Uh, that's like free points. My theory is this, the more you see it, the, the higher the probability that you'll remember those kinds of things. Um, I, I firmly believe in applied and, and I don't think that high stakes testing, especially in an environment like this, helps us learn and remember and apply. So this is not a self-paced course, uh, so you don't have the ability to work ahead. The exception is uh, your project. And I've broken the project up into four phases. Three of the phases feed your midterm exam, I guess, if we have to go with the traditional model. And of course, the final product is considered to be your final exam, if you will. Again, all my courses are project-based. I, I really uh, don't have much use for the traditional testing and um, drill and kill kind of uh, teaching and learning because I don't believe that it really does anything at all. So um, the, those project segments will be brought into modules two weeks or so before you know they're due or whatever. I, I do a, a, a specific uh, spot, I, I have a specific spot in my modules that says looking ahead which will always give you a heads up for um, what is coming. Um, the mastery checks, the little quizzes, don't get released before um, the rest of the module for that week. The same thing with the discussions, and those things are finite within uh, that module start and finish. Our day one is always Monday, and day seven is Sunday. Um, I've, I've kind of tossed this around a couple of times as to whether Monday through Sunday really works for my adult students. Uh, there have been a couple of courses where I've shifted that. Um, so if you think that a shift would be good, post a thread on the FAQs and let's have a conversation. Um, it's probably a good important uh, point here to make is that I want you to use the FAQ board for anything that is one to many. In other words, if you were in the classroom or we were sitting someplace 
talking, um, you know, you might make it known that you had a question or wanted to make a point by raising your hand in um, online interactions. We're asynchronous, so um, posting something on the FAQs preserves that one-to-many and therefore the efficiency and effectiveness of the communication. That said, um, if you have something uh, personal, then of course, you know, send me an email and uh, through through Canvas and I will address it there. Um, if you send me a private communication uh, with something that should have been posted on the FAQs, do not take it personally, but I will ask you to repost that on the FAQs so I will answer it there. This preserves um, your streamlined work and my streamlined work. Uh, my experience is that a lot of the questions that people ask usually are answered in the materials that I've given, but occasionally they're not. So I think it's real important that I know that and that I can answer it for everybody because probably someone's out there thinking the same thing. Um, if you are a military member and on active duty uh, or become active, uh, or get deployed. First of all, thank you for your service. Um, but second of all, communicate with me. And, uh, you know, I, I've found a lot of different ways to work around things with our military. Um, and, and I will uh, tell you that my military students never fail to set the bar and lead. So it's my privilege to work with you and uh, I, we'll get through it. We'll just get through it. My job here is to uh, make sure you're successful. So, you know, you do your stuff and um, I'm with you the whole way. If you don't do your stuff, then I'm going to wonder where you are. And this is just for everybody. You know, don't drop out. Don't get behind and then raise the flag when it's four weeks down the road. Keep in touch. Um, and if you're not logging in, uh, you'll find that I, I look at that data. I analyze that data. I communicate with you and say, hey, you haven't logged in. In you know a week where are you let's talk how can I help that kind of a thing so that's kind of for everybody um, the big overriding point being communication is key I've got a list so we don't ramble here um, I will be announcing a time for a synchronous meeting uh, which is of course not mandatory however it's going to give you a good opportunity to ask questions and get a feel for uh, some of the things we'll be doing and if we have a synchronous meeting like a Google Hangout or a Skype session or whatever I typically uh, try to record those things I can't always manage that but it's certainly not information that you know that's the only time and place you can get it what will give you is the opportunity to kind of dig a little bit deeper into what we're doing why we're doing it and, and you know use that time to communicate uh, what it is that you don't understand or need okay um, I know that there's no good time for everyone. I know that's that's not even a standard that I could ever meet, but uh, rest assured, I have Skyped with students all over the world during lots of different time zones. Um, unfortunately for a few of them in the middle of the night, I'm, I'm like a tired toddler um, at that point, but it, the, the message here is that I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that I get with you and that you know what you're supposed to be doing and that you have everything you need to do it. Okay. Um, much of the work we do in this course is facilitated by peer feedback, so think of yourselves as a project team as we go forward. Um, you know, we're all adults with families, jobs, and school, and I'm no different than you, so support each other and do all that you can to stay on schedule and complete your work on time. Uh, you know, deadlines are deadlines, but emergencies do happen. So if something unforeseen happens and you can't complete your work on time, um, send me, you know, a private communication and we'll, we'll get a plan. Um, don't just drop the course and go away. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, give us all a chance to, you know, figure it out and make it work. Um, occasionally, sometimes those, those things don't, um, always work, but, um, you know, I want to do my level best to make sure you stay with it. Um, I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader and biggest fan and, uh, you know, sort of your coach that, uh, kind of kicks it up a notch and, and hopefully tries to motivate you. So um, if you need an accommodation, please contact the Office of Student Disabilities to apply. Um, what happens then is that they will verify uh, whatever it is that you're asking for and give you information to communicate 
with your instructor. Um, according to FERPA, which is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act of 1974, FERPA, um, instructors should never handle medical documentation of any kind, nor should they request it or require it. In terms of time zones uh, for the course, that I may have mentioned already that the modules open at 12.01 uh, each week Eastern time. So just be aware of that. And it, it's it's just another one of those things that, um, you know, different parts of the country, different parts of the world, we have students all over the place. This is just about the only middle ground to standardize this um, that we can come up with. So. Um, be aware of that and make sure that your time zones are set in Canvas. Also be sure to set your notifications in Canvas, um, which was probably part of what you picked up from the checklist and feedback. So um, moving right along, um, and in terms of my expectations, there, there are a couple of really important things I guess that I might highlight. Um, you're expected to log in at least three different times per week participate in the course. Um, the reasons are many. Um, I've seen people log into my courses and spend literally 15 to 20 minutes a week on the course. Their grade will reflect that because they can't possibly do the work um, that's uh, on the same par as junior, senior in college. Um, performance. So I do expect that. Um, logging in at least three times per week um, even if you log in for a very short time on each day, um, you're going to find that those little snapshots are going to enhance um, your experience in the course. And interaction in online courses, uh, I'll say this many times, is, is critical. Um, otherwise, you know, it's just sort of this one-dimensional thing and could be sort of boring and it, it doesn't um, stand in line with what we're looking for in terms of peers or being a working group or you know providing feedback and, and critique and those sorts of things. Um, nothing good occurs in a vacuum I guess is, is kind of my point. Uh, so discussion participation, discussions are, are uh, an important vehicle for this course because we often will put our work out there to get feedback, to get critique, um, to get suggestions from other people because, again, nothing good occurs in a vacuum and how I understand something may be different than how you understand something that may be different how she understands and he understands. Um, so it's... it's uh, going to um, become apparent that there's a pattern with the discussions right away. There are two types of postings. The first type of posting is your initial response to the question or questions. Um, and that's a little bit more formal, that one. That's the one that you need to post by Thursday of each week before midnight. And um, the other type of posting is your responses to at least three others' postings. Don't bother putting good posts um, or nice job or any of those things. They don't add to um, the discussion, though it's really nice to say. My point with this is that that sometimes becomes the substance and the whole of what people post. They just regurgitate what someone else has said. Um, yeah, I'm familiar with regurgitation. Don't do it. It just, it doesn't show any synthesis, doesn't show any learning, and you won't earn credit for that sort of thing, just so you know. Um, the purpose of logging in and posting your initial response on Thursday and then responding to everyone else by Sunday is this. It's been my experience, both as a student and an educator, that everybody will wait till Sunday night. Given no other requirements, everybody will wait till Sunday night to post. And, you know, you'll have a few people that may get out there and post earlier in the week. Um, I tended to want to get it done. I just wanted to get it done and get it posted as soon as possible um, so that I didn't have that thing hanging over my head anymore. And sometimes I would sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then Sunday night, there's this whole flurry of things going back and forth. Well, first of all, you can't read all of that and make sense of it and, and you know, kind of let it marinate. And second of all, what is the point? What is the point of that? Nothing. There's no point. <laughs> it's not interactive. It's not helpful. It turns into busy work. So that is why I do require that you post your initial posting on Thursdays um, 
before midnight. If you look at calendar, I've got a whole bunch of information there, you know, day one, week one, day four, week one, day seven, week one. And I do put reminders that will um, show up each week that, you know, your postings are due tomorrow. Um, those things sort of just serve as a tickler to um, help you manage your time. Since this is a senior level uh, course, you'll be expected to demonstrate senior level writing, grammar, and punctuation, and points will be deducted. Now, the, the more formal posting for your discussions is going to be your response. Um, the responses to others are maybe a little less formal, um, but that first response, I would advise you to compose it in Word and then cut and paste it. You can't attach any um, documents or files to the discussions. However, um, I, I think that composing in Word and saving it um, also protects you if for some reason your wireless burps or you lose your connectivity or some crazy thing happens. Um, I, I know I've been using Canvas for a long time and um, I've had you know servers time out or weird things happen you know caches go crazy and I lose my work and I, I you know I almost literally beat my head against the desk when that kind of thing happens. So, you know, no matter what your experience, no matter how much of a hurry you're in, um, take precautions to make sure that you've got it someplace. And, um, you know, spell check, grammar check, all those things are very good. Um, adhere to the word count minimums for your discussions. I'm not counting words. I have no desire to count words. I'm looking for substance. So make sure that, you know, you you avoid sending me a whole lot of opinions um, without citations. Uh, you know I won't I won't go so far as to say that your opinion doesn't matter, but the fact is is that your opinion or the conclusion that you are offering um, in any arena is always stronger when you have things to support it. You may absolutely be right. It could be that your work experience and expertise tells us this, but at this point in this arena where we are right now, you need citations. So keep that in mind. Um, also, one of the things that uh, is pretty important is um, writing concisely and using um, a discipline for technical writing. Technical writing is very important and becoming even more important in almost all disciplines. So for our purposes, we will use APA. Now, is it that you're going to go out there in the world and use APA? No. But APA disciplines your writing such that you say what you need to say, only what you need to say, and it's said in a way that avoids slang and um, the types of things that perhaps someone with English as a second language would scratch their head and say, what does this mean? Um, we should all write in ways that, you know, kind of cross all those boundaries. That way if somebody's translating our work, um, from English to another language, they stand a better chance of being able to understand it, um, you know, if we're not using some some sort of obscure reference uh, that they just might not be able to understand. So APA kind of gives us a lot of tools in that regard. I think that about does it. I will be revising my syllabus in the next day or so and getting that out to you. I'd really like to have a lot more detail on there. It's the same one that I inherited when I taught this course last year. And um, I, I think that for all of us, details are good. So uh, hopefully I've given you enough information to get started. And hopefully you have a sense of who I am and where I'm coming from and uh, just how much I'm looking forward to working with you. I, I think it's going to be a good course. Remember, I'm always here. Communicate with me if you need anything. And um, let's have a great eight weeks.